What's going on guys? Um, today's video we're gonna talk about uh, rod bolt stretch. So uh, why do people use rod bolt stretch instead of just torquing it down to the recommended torque value? Uh, simply because we can't always put all our trust into torque wrenches. Even though you spend a thousand dollars on a torque wrench um, to become exactly precise you should use a rod bolt stretch gauge. One of these. The reason is um, torque wrenches, uh, you can set it to 60 foot pounds, say that's what you're supposed to torque down your bolt to. Um, your, when you actually do the torque procedure and uh, your torque wrench says it reaches 60 foot pounds, it could actually be, it depends what torque wrench you have, but it could be plus or minus five, plus or minus two, right? And uh, when you're building an engine, you want to be as precise as possible. So with that being said, uh, to become as precise as possible, you're going to use a rod bolt stretch gauge. So what this does is it measures the uh, untorqued, unstretched value of the bolt and you set the dial to zero. Then you torque it down to, uh, say if you had to torque it down to 60 foot pounds, um, what I would do is I start off by torquing the bolt to 50 foot pounds, measure the stretch and uh, see if the stretch re uh, reaches the manufacturer's specifications and uh, if it doesn't reach the specification set by the manufacturer but at 50 foot pounds then I'd probably raise it maybe to 54 foot pounds or 53 foot pounds uh, torque the bolt down to the that much uh, measure again and just keep them slowly going up until the bolt has reached that proper stretch to measure a uh, rod bolt stretch you're gonna need <coughs> three to four things um, Ideally, you're gonna need a table vise or a rod vise clamp. That's like very ideal if you're a professional engine builder. You'll probably have one of those uh, special table vises that grip onto rods. I don't know. I don't know what they're called, but uh, it's not needed. Um, for in a garage build, you should have a table vise. I don't even have that. I don't have a proper bench. So what I'm using is this, I don't know what it's called, a F clamp. And I clamp the rod down to the table and even then it is not super secure I had to hold it down with my hand or else the clamp will slip and it's not the ideal thing you should just have a vice a table vice I'm getting all mixed up with all these clamp names but uh, yeah just get the rod secured somehow which uh, you can torque it and it not slip second thing is your rod bolt stretch gauge um, I got this from Summit Racing for about a uh, hundred bucks Canadian or 80 bucks Canadian something like that not too sure. Pretty easy to use. Torque wrench. Um, the torque wrench that I have been using throughout this entire build is uh, AC Delco. Um, forgot the actual part number. Uh, oh, it's ARM3034A. Um, it reads from 12 foot pounds to 250 foot pounds and it has angled on it. Um, I believe. Mm, it's a plus or minus two foot pounds and the 10% error something like that so uh, I it could be either if I said it to 60 foot pounds it could be either uh, torquing to like 58 foot pounds or it could be torquing to 62 foot pounds so it's accurate to that much that's why uh, we're measuring rod bolt stretch so we're going to start off with uh, my fourth rod, I uh, actually already measured all the other ones, this is the last one I got to measure. So I'm just going to take out all the bolts quickly. So all the bolts are out, uh, manly rods, the caps go in a certain way. So you look at the writing, uh, writing side goes together, I don't know if we can focus, writing side goes together, uh, no writing side goes together. So take it off you don't have to really set it down and on the table a certain way because it's kind of hard to forget what I like to do next is clean my rod bolts so I'm just using some brake clean spray off the rod bolts once a bolt is sprayed off I like to measure the bolt length to make sure they're not yielded because these aren't brand new parts I'm reusing my uh, rods and rod bolts um, they're AP, ARP bolts, ARP 2000 bolts, so uh, they should be able to be reused a couple of times. Um, you just have to always make sure to check for stretch and make sure they're not yielded. The spec for it online says uh, 
the under head length under this head right here needs to be uh, 1.5 inches so I can't really measure it like that so what I do is I measure the head uh, I'm trying to do it as straight as possible Hold on camera so the under head length is 1.4 oh no wait the under head uh, I mean the head is 0.4 inches I believe that's what it's saying 0.4 inches so then if I my under head length has to be 1.5 inches then the total bolt length should be 1.9 inches so if I measure 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 you gotta make sure you're as straight as possible so I don't know if you can see that's reading 1.9 on the dot it's right at 0 and that means 1 inch and then that's the 9 right there and that's the 0 so it's 1.9 exactly this bolt has not stretched according to a manufacturer spec don't forget to clean your rod cap and the threads in your uh, inside your rod brake clean pressurized brake clean Works pretty good. Uh, use an air compressor if you have one. I will when I do final assembly. Going to apply some ARP torque lube. Just a little bit. Make sure my gloves are clean. Spread it around a bit. Make sure you get the top of the head. Put it back in there. and do that to another bolt. All right, so now I have the bolts um, in the rod. They're not torqued at all, they're just hand tightened. So I got my stretch gauge, put it all on. One sec. Put it on. All right. I think I found a good setting where you guys can kind of see. So there's actually notches in these ARP uh, bolts. Um, I'll show you in a second. But this rod bolt stretch gauge, uh, the needle will sit in the notch in the bolt. And what I do is I kind of pinch it. It's a little bit like this. My thumb is over here grabbing the dial, top of the dial. And I kind of pinch it till uh, I feel it seated. So. Uh, once it's kind of seated, I don't pinch it super hard, just pinch it enough that the dial is not moving and it's kind of the, it's, I know it's in the right spot. It's kind of a more of a feel thing. Once you guys have your hands on it firsthand, you'll get a hang of it. Once I feel like it's in the right spot, I turn this to zero it. super precise so it is a little bit finicky you just have to play around with it a bit hard to do on camera but I think that's Hold on. I feel like that is the spot all right, so now I have the rod secured to the table. Um, now I'm just gonna torque each bolt to 30 foot pounds and then uh, untorque it, loosen them. That's just so I know that the bolts are seated. You're supposed to do that a few times. So torque them to 30 foot pounds, loosen them, torque them to 30 foot pounds, loosen them, just so you know that they're seated and your final torque value is the correct torque value that you're setting to the bolts. So set my torque wrench to 31 foot pounds and I'm going to torque each bolt equally and then uh, loosen them and then torque them again. So this F clamp um, can hold the bolts down uh, pretty well with 30 foot pounds. I mean hold the rod down pretty good with 30 foot pounds.
30 foot pounds. Oh, don't do what I just did. Make sure it's on there well. Lucky it didn't strip. Loose. Loose. Now I'm gonna torque them again to 30 foot pounds. Now, since I did this a few times, uh, this is the final rod that I'm testing. I know with majority of my bolts that uh, 55 foot pounds was the ideal stretch. So I'm just gonna jump straight to 55 foot pounds, but if I were doing this for the first time, I would set my uh, torque wrench to 50 foot pounds, torque it to 50 foot pounds, take it off the clamp, remeasure, and see the stretch. But we're gonna skip that and go straight to 55 foot pounds, and then I'm gonna show you uh, how to read the stretch gauge showing that it stretched to what I needed it to stretch to. <laughs> so this is the kind of sketchy part. Um, this clamp cannot really hold 55 foot pounds. <laughs> Alright, so we have the stretch gauge here again. This is the unmarked side, so we're going off the zero, the actual zero on the dial. Now, let me put it in. The needle has moved just a little bit. So each little notch means a foul. Um, I think Manley's recommendation is 0 0.058 thousandths of an inch. I don't know if that's how you say it. So 0 0.0058 of an inch uh, to 0 0.0062 of an inch. So we're looking for about five to six notches. Anything over six notches is too much. One, two, three, four, five. It's pretty much on five. Um, if I sit here and play around with it a bit, hold on. It's a little bit over five. Uh, almost at six. Ooh. Yeah, that's like where it is. So that is a proper stretch. Um, it's between zero point zero zero five and zero point zero zero six. So that's ideal stretch. All right, so that's pretty much it for rod bolt stretch. I hope I explained it uh, pretty well. If I haven't, uh, just comment uh, what you want me to improve on, or if you have any questions, just comment. I'll try to reply uh, as soon as possible. It's kind of hard with something like that, like that dowel gauge. It's so uh, finicky uh, because it's so precise. It's kind of hard to show on camera but that's kind of the gist of it. You'll just have to play with it uh, firsthand. But I hope I explained it uh, pretty well. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope that helps. Again, thanks guys for watching. Uh, leave a like if you learned anything from this video. And if you wanna follow uh, the build all the way to the end, uh, to the first startup, hopefully it starts, uh, just hit the subscribe button and Hopefully shortly uh, we'll get this block assembled and put in the speed 3.